Whitner, how are you today? Good morning, Seth. It's a beautiful day in Cerro Gordo. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for asking, and thank you for making time for us. Uh, you're in year one, in fact, uh, probably first month and a half, two months at Cerro Gordo, Dr. Widener. How are things going? How are you adjusting? It's been great. I've felt very welcome. welcomed. I've had uh, a great deal to learn, of course, in a short amount of time, but um, I've had a fantastic start. I can't wait till next week when we get kids back in the building. Getting kids in the building next Wednesday. Uh, for We were talking before we got started. Uh, that's when Clinton goes back. I know you've got kids at Monticello. That's when they go back, and and seems like a lot of uh, districts are heading back next Wednesday, so we look forward to the first day of school. It, summer went by way too fast, by the way. Is it just me, or did summer go way, way too fast? It gets faster every year, I swear. It does. I think it does. Yeah, no question. No question about it. Dr. Widener, uh, tell us about your journey to uh, Sarah Gordo Schools, and particularly in, in education and, and how you ended up where you're at. Uh, give us that th that story. Sure. Well, it, it keeps getting longer, so I, I've got to go back a little ways <laughs> here. But um, I started off at the U of I after high school. I graduated from Monticello um, at the U of I. I did my student teaching over in Rantoul, and I actually started out as a high school teacher, so I taught uh, social studies over there starting in 2000, and um, during the time that I was teaching, I also coached volleyball and softball. Um, I went back and got my master's pretty early because of the tuition waivers that I got from the U of I for taking student teachers, and in 2006, after I finished up that program at the U of I, the dean position at the high school was open. Um, I never really intended on taking that path that early, but I had just finished up an internship with the dean at the high school and it, it kind of just all fell into place. So 2006, I became the dean of students at, at the high school in Rantoul and was responsible for discipline and kind of attendance work with about half of the student body. Um, during that job, I worked really closely with the staff at the Special Education Cooperative, which at the time was right across the street. And that partnership led me to a principalship the next year um, within the rural Champaign County Special Education Cooperative. It was a program called Pathways, and it was a K-12 behavior school. Basically, the rural Champaign County schools sent students there who had behavior needs that were so severe that they, they couldn't really um, participate in the local schools. So um, spent a year at that Pathways program. That was great experience. And then the elementary principal job in my hometown in White Heath came open. And so I made that transition over to White Heath in the Monticello district in 2008. Mm -hmm. And I was in Monticello until last year. So 15 mm -hmm. years over there as an elementary principal, um, first at the second and third grade levels, and then pre-K through fifth the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and in that time, I also went back to the U of I again for the third time. I got my doctorate and finished that up in 2020. Um, that led me to the superintendent certification. And actually, uh, Matt Snyder, who was the superintendent of the Regional Office of Education, had mentioned Sarah Gordo to me and kind of said, you know, this place is a kind of a hidden gem. And uh, that's exactly what it is. It's it's an outstanding school district and, and program that I'm really happy to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Widener, um, how did you, how did you end up in, in administration? Um, you know, and was that something when you started in education, you, you looked at as an opportunity that you wanted to take advantage of? Um, what was that, that journey like for you? Was it, was it planned? Was it unexpected? Uh, and maybe who played an instrumental role in some of your, um, uh, years in administration as far as a maybe a mentor or, or a leader type of a role for you? How about those things? Oh, that's a great question. I did not intend to be an administrator when I started out. I wanted to be a French teacher at first, um, and then I quickly switched that to history. Um, and when I started teaching, like I said, I got some tuition waivers, and that sent me back to the U of I because I felt like I needed to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, and through that internship process is when I, I made that first step into administration. Um, in terms of mentors, I've had uh, so many over the years. Um, Jerry Wisniewski way back in Rantoul was a really outstanding mentor there who 
um, helped me as a teacher. Larry Maynard, who I believe is in Oakwood as a superintendent now, was also a great mentor for me over in Rantoul. Um, when I came to Monticello, I started out as a principal. Mary Vogt was the, another principal who is now the superintendent in DeMent. She was and is a great mentor for me. Um, Dr. Zimmerman, who was at Monticello for many years, is still a mentor for me. So I've just kind of had a lot of, of people helping me kind of move that way across the years. Mm -hmm. And I think the step to move into the superintendency for me is, personally, I love a challenge. Um, and professionally, I feel like I can make an impact on a, on a greater scale. So I, it has felt like a natural progression, although it was not what I intended when I started out. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Well, anything else about your journey to uh, Sarah Gordo that we haven't touched on, Dr. Widener? Maybe a unique twist along the way or, or something that we, we haven't touched on you want to put out there for us at this point? You know, I think what I would just highlight is that from the first moment I interviewed here, it felt like home. I felt very comfortable with the school board from, from the first minute I walked in. And it was just, it felt right from the start. Everyone who I've talked to here is has been very positive about the kids, about the staff, about the community. And it just is a place where generations upon generations, you know, want to bring their kids here and, and have them go through the schools that they went through. And I think that's a really great quality. Sure. Very good. Dr. Emily Widener is the superintendent of Sarah Gordo Schools and our guest on the phone here for this morning. So, uh, Dr. Widener, you're at Sarah Gordo now. What have you learned about the school district as you, uh, I'm sure, transitioned uh, in, in Brett Robinson's final months? You know, sat down with him pretty often, I'm sure, to get the lay of the land and uh, find out what the terrain is like. What have you learned about Sarah Gordo Schools? You talked about it being a hidden gem. What do you like about it? <laughs> Well, I think what I've learned is is that the district is in a very good place. Um, we have we have full staff to start off the school year, which is definitely a challenge. Uh, the facilities are very well maintained and updated. Uh, Mr. Robinson and the board have done a fantastic job of um, recently putting on an addition. The elementary school has been updated. The big project this summer was the addition of HVAC um, system in the old junior high building. So we um, have had a lot of big improvements um, and we've got more exciting things kind of coming up this year as well. Very good. Let's talk about the summer months, Dr. Widener. What was going on? What did you have to take the reins on as the work was being done at the school district this year? Yeah, it's been kind of like a beehive around here, honestly. There have been um, several different construction crews coming in and out every day. We've got the HVAC. Um, we've had Davis Haug, Brown Russo, Bodine Electric, Aeroglass, Autobomb, and Abateco all in and out all summer. So it's been a very noisy, very busy place. Um, we work with CLDD Architects, and they've done a fantastic job of coordinating this whole thing. It's really amazing to see all the coordination that goes into this project. So right now, the the work in the classrooms is done um, just in time for school. They promised me we'd be ready to start on day one, and we are, so that is fantastic news. Um, but it has been definitely a busy and challenging summer in, in, as far as facilities goes. I have to give a big shout out to our custodial and maintenance staff who have really kind of worked around that and done everything that they can to get our building looking amazing for the start of school next week. Is this the first time you've really kind of had to oversee uh, like the, this kind of, uh, this kind of work in a school building or have you had this, have you had experience with these types of things before? Well, in Monticello, we had a big transition the last couple of years that I was there. So I moved an entire staff um, from one building to the other building over the summer and we got all new furniture and, it was a huge coordinated effort there as well. So I had some experience in that regard. Um, my husband and father are both in construction. So I've got a lot of kind of um, side experience hearing about construction things throughout my entire life. So um, I felt pretty comfortable 
with with the process and pretty at home with it. But definitely this is the first one that I've kind of been in charge of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What else has been going on in the summer months? You know, one thing I've I've noted in talking with your peers uh, this summer and mostly the start of the summer. But, you know, when I was a kid, it felt like the school buildings largely shut down. You know, maybe you were in there. Um, for for a basketball practice or a camp or something like that in in June or July, um, but otherwise there wasn't a whole lot going on in the school buildings. I know there were some sports practices that would go on in the summer when I was in high school, but uh, again the the building largely shut down until maybe early August when everybody got back to work for band and those sports seasons that started back up. But that's really not the case anymore. There's a lot going on in, in the school buildings these days. So what was going on at Sierra Gordo schools over the summer as it related to students and them being in and out of the building? Sure. Well, I think the, the biggest portion of the, the building usage in the summer was definitely the sports programs coming in for open gyms and things like that. So there were always kids in and out. Um, the rest of the building, you know, where I'm at in the junior high, high school was largely shut down due to the construction project. So not a lot of kids in this side of the building, mm -hmm. just a lot of construction workers. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had, we had plenty of open gyms and workouts this summer for the kids. And now they're coming back in and doing the pictures for the seniors so we can have the banners and things like that. Um, but we are, we're back in full swing with sports already too, with the junior high and the high school, sure. um, both practicing now. Yeah. And you mentioned those projects there. It looks like they're going to be done for the start of school. You said, well, the portion of the HVAC project that is in the classrooms is done and now it switches to the maintenance room. So away from the kids. So the full system won't be up and running until this fall, but um, the portion that you know needs to be done before the kids get here is done. Sure. Is HVAC in the school, Dr. Widener, does that bring air conditioning to the classroom or was air conditioning already there and this is just an improvement on your system? This is an improvement on the system. Okay. We had window units in the older part of the building. That's right. That's right. I remember Brett mentioning that actually at the top of the yeah. summer. So, all right. Very good. Very good. Dr. Widener, anything else on, on the summer at Cerro Gordo, um, your, your transition to the school, um, anything you want to mention there? Nope. I think it's been as smooth as, as can possibly be as a first year superintendent. I still have a lot of things I'm learning, but I'm excited to be here and excited to learn as much as I can, as fast as I can. For sure. Well, Dr. Widener, let's take a break here. We'll come back with some more. Dr. Emily Widener is the superintendent of Cerro Gordo Schools, our guest on the phone. More to come with Dr. Widener here on the WHOW Morning Show. CEO Paul Scourin here from Warner Hospital and Health Services in Clinton. Call our Family Medicine Clinic now to get your children's school physicals scheduled. We're accepting new patients of all ages. More info by clicking our icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. For the latest in Central Illinois agricultural news, visit IllinoisFarmRadio.com. Get updated information on markets, weather, ag news, local interviews with NAFB farm broadcaster Jared White, and much, much more. All at IllinoisFarmRadio.com. How much fun is your job? When was the last time you jumped out of bed before the alarm and got to work early? Do the folks around your office laugh enough? When you get a win, does everyone on the team celebrate your success? Does solving creative problems give you a thrill? We know that thrill. And if you want more of it, we want to hear from you. We work with local business to increase revenue and grow the bottom line. We do it by creating smart, creative advertising on air, online, and on smartphones. Every day, the Miller Media Group team comes to work and does a job that makes things better for our listener, our client, and our community. We also believe in the importance of a balance of work and life. We believe it's necessary for a thriving workplace. If you're the creative problem solver, we're looking for you. You could earn with commissions as much as $50,000 a year. Plus, we offer generous time off. Sound good? Sound like leaping out of bed for? Get started by sending an email to sales at randyradio.com. That's sales at randyradio.com. The Miller Media Group is an equal opportunity employer. 
DeWitt County's number one source for local news is on the air and online 24 hours a day. The latest local news stories are heard every hour on Central Illinois News Station, the big 1520 AM and 92.3 FM WHOW. Stream live at DeWittDailyNews.com. They're also heard every hour on the station that's your easy choice, 95.9 FM WEZC. And to read the latest local news on your electronic device, including tablets, iPhones, and smartphones, go to DeWittDailyNews.com. DeWitt County's number one source for local news is on the air online 24 hours a day. You're spending Central Illinois, Once again, a good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence, and the WHOW Morning Show streams to Facebook and YouTube. It's brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin insurance agent in Clinton. Dr. Emily Widener, superintendent of Sarah Gordo Schools, my guest on the phone today. And uh, Dr. Widener, as we get kids back into the school building, uh, let's talk some curriculum things. What's going on with the curriculum this year? Is there anything new? Well, curriculum-wise, one of the big new things is actually at our elementary school. Um, at the elementary school, they are adopting new programs in both reading and math this year. So we're excited about that opportunity. Um, some new things going on at the high school. Actually, um, we got a couple of grants from ADM that we're pretty excited about. We're able to fix up our greenhouse for the ag program. Um, so that'll be a great benefit for our high school kids. And then we have a kind of collaboration project between the high school and the elementary school. At the high school, we got a chicken coop this summer. And so the elementary students got incubators. They'll do an embryology unit that the high school kids will help lead. And then, of course, the high school kids will be taking care of the chickens. And um, so it's kind of a neat cooperative effort that, that both groups will um, benefit from not only learning about, you know, the topic, but also working together. I think anytime you can create those opportunities for the older kids to work with the younger kids, it's great for both. Mm-hmm. Um, and FFA is pretty strong at, uh, at, at Sarah Gordo schools, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think that program is, is going to continue to grow. I think mm-hmm. Mrs. Mead is, is working to grow the program even more. So this is a good step in that direction. Um, At the elementary school, we also have a pretty cool addition to the entryway of the building. Um, Mrs. Neville and her staff have put in a sensory path that's right there in the front hallway. And basically, it's just different designs on the floor that the students can, you know, they jump from one to the other or skip. There's different kind of motions they can do to keep their bodies active. And really, the goal is for them to self-regulate, especially in the morning when they get to school, um, to be able to just kind of get some energy out in a contained way Mm -hmm. and get their bodies and minds ready to be in the classroom and and learn. So that's something that we're pretty excited about. And it looks great in the building as well. For sure. For sure. Anything else? Um, Yeah. We also expanded our life skills program at the elementary school, which I think is a great thing. And Basically, what that means is that we've added another special education teacher. Um, Typically, in a small school like ours, students who have the most intensive needs sometimes would have to go to the um, special education cooperative programs that are in Decatur. And um, adding this life skills program and adding another teacher allows us to keep more Sarah Gordo students within our district, which I think is a great benefit to the students and the family. So we're very excited about that program. Very good. Very good. So a lot of good things happening. Uh, Is a lot of this, uh, Dr. Widener, when it comes to curriculum, things that were kind of already in motion when you got there and you just had to see see it to the finish? Is is a lot of that some of uh, a lot of this some of that? Yes. Yeah. The curriculum changes were already kind of in progress. Um, I started attending board meetings last January and just kind of being a a silent observer. So I've been able to kind of watch as as things develop and and get in a little bit early and and start learning about them. So the staff at the elementary school has been working on this for some time, and Mm -hmm. and this is the implementation year. Sure. Very good. Very good. Well, Dr. Widener, anything else on on curriculum as we uh, speak here this morning? I don't think I have anything else today on curriculum, yeah. Good deal. Well, we get back to school next Wednesday. What's kind of the first uh, few weeks of school look like at Sarah Gordo Schools? Sure, yeah, busy time, definitely. (laughs) We've got our teachers coming back uh, Monday and Tuesday for in-service days. So 
Um, we have a safety drill on Tuesday that I think is going to be a great experience, very important thing. We're joining up with DMENT and DLAN Weldon schools to go to um, Monticello Christian Church, which our local first responders have deemed would be the reunification spot in a, a serious emergency if we had to evacuate students and staff. So we will go through that with um, Sheriff Vogelzang over in Monticello and some other first responders. Mm -hmm. Uh, kids come back to school on Wednesday, so that'll be a big day for everyone. We also um, have some meet the teacher type of things going on. So tonight is back to school night at the junior high. The kindergartners get to meet their teachers next Tuesday, the 15th. And then the we have the, the kind of typical parent meetings at the elementary school coming up on the 17th and 22nd. And then in terms of sports, we've got our scrimmages coming up on the 18th. So the volleyball team starts off in the gym and then we head out to the football field. We introduce um, a lot of the, the sports teams, including, you know, younger kids like JFL and then the football team scrimmages. So that'll be a really fun night too. Um, so just a lot going on in terms of all the back to school events and then getting the kids acclimated to their new classrooms and teachers and lots of sports. So yeah. it'll be a fun, fun, exciting August. Sure. So what's your, what are you looking forward to most about your first day of school as a superintendent, Dr. Widener? I can't wait to get to know the students. I haven't had a chance to, to meet many of the students yet. The, uh, the junior high baseball team waits for their bus outside my office door. And so I've had a chance to go out and chat with a few of those boys, which has been great. But, uh, I, I definitely like being around the kids, and I can't wait to get to know them. Very good. Well, Dr. Widener, where's the best place for folks to follow along with all things Sarah Gordo Schools? Uh, we've got a few places. Our our website is saragordocgbroncos.org, uh, and then we have a fantastic Facebook page as well for people who are on social media, Sarah Gordo District 100, and uh, try to keep everyone up to date on what's going on and all the great things that are happening here. Very good. Dr. Widener, thanks so much for making time for us. Dr. Emily Widener, superintendent of Sarah Gordo Schools, Network News on the way. With SRN News, I'm Rich Thomason. After cooling over the past 12 months, inflation heated up a bit last month, rising 3.2% compared with a year earlier. Inflation still